Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, once again to the Overwatch Watchers Brawl. I am 3.007, .007, and tonight I'm joined by Callisti. Hey there, guys. Callisti here, ready to cast your next match here. Uh, we are going to be looking at Team Safe Haven versus Mean Greens. Mm -mm -mm. And again, this is an loser's bracket match so this time in the tournament this is going to be the loser going to be going home for the rest of this second brawl however before we get started we have a lovely little pregame inter for you, interview for you meet sinister from mean greens hello sinister it is great to have you how you feeling i'm feeling good now, always excited to play good stuff we talked about you being a main tank before we jumped on here what are your favorite tanks uh, I actually really enjoy Reinhardt. I know it sounds bland, but you'd be surprised what he can pull off in a game. Uh, he has a rocket hammer. I don't think there's anything bland about I know, that's pretty great. <laughs> uh, the, now, you guys are just coming off from a bit of a rough match from Luminescent Gaming. What would you say that your best takeaways that you're going to throw into this match here? Oh, I think that we are really going to pull together on uh, this match. See, we have uh, Gecko. He was able to, he wasn't able to stay for the full matches last time and I believe that uh, we, we we seen what we did wrong and we're going to be able to uh, come back much stronger this match. Awesome. Good stuff. And, you know, just one more final trick before we go. For Li Jiang Tower, uh, how do you guys like this map? Is it your favorite map? Your least favorite map? What do you usually like to do? I don't really mind it as much. I think it is a very nice map when it comes to a lot of different characters and a lot of different strats. Uh, I I don't know how I feel about like it being <laughs> a preference of it being dark. I don't know if you've ever seen like the the light the 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 day version. I like the day version more than the night version. Uh, but yes, I'm totally fine with playing Li Zhang once again. I think we played it last time. All right, so we're going to go into that now. Sinister, thank you for joining us. Good luck to you, Mean Greens, and of course, good luck to Team Safe Haven. Right. Thanks so much. And so now, given that, yes, we are going to be going into Li Zhang Tower first. It's a bit of a 2CP action with a lot of different comps you can run here. Definitely. Now, we have seen uh, some Fair Mercy, very popular on Li Zhang Tower. We might see some of that today. Um, now, we are going to be readying up here on the map, getting ready to go in. Uh, now, do we, uh, do we know anything about signature picks, anything like that, that these teams like to run? Now, I did not get the chance to see Team Safe Haven in action. I did get to see the Mean Greens, and yes, Gecko was a huge part of that particular squad. However, from a composition perspective, it I would say it's pretty much what the usual you'd see for depending on the map. If it's a GOAT situation, they'll probably run that GOATs. The other thing, though, is that we are going to see comps change, possibly depending on what hero bands come out. Definitely. And... Uh just waiting here for the match now um and of course before i forget we have to remind you that in the twitch chat there is an mvp poll going on so when you see the link pop up be sure to click that link let your voice be heard let us know who your favorite player is of the match and they will be awarded the bragging rights of mvp all right here looks like we're going to be starting out on control room so definitely here uh we could definitely see goats we could see some reaper um so the close range can tend to be favored here not a whole lot of high ground and very choked out spawn rooms makes it really easy to have a high amount of aggression uh you generally do see teams push forward into that spawn and if you have an ultimate advantage that can very easily snowball to the end of the round Oh yeah, there's that great place you can hold just outside the Lunar Rover on one side and the pod on the other where you just have that situation of you need to find a way to bust pass. Speaking of ways to bust pass, like you mentioned, Reaper's solid pick. Junkrat also not a bad option. Definitely. And so we are actually going to see goats or something pretty dang close to it on our red team here. We're running three supports with the Brigitte, Lucio, and Moira, and three tanks. It's a, kind of a 3-3 kind of thing going on there. The uh, traditional goats. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I did see some of this a couple seasons ago uh, as an uh, earlier meta when there were some changes when Brigitte had first come out. 
uh, you started seeing these kind of 3-3 comps, and it's going to be very close range. The longest range heroes that they have on our red team are going to be Zarya and Moira, believe it or not. Now, meanwhile, on Team Safe Haven, they're actually doing the Zenny Goats, meaning that not only did they get the Discord, that's a nasty quantity of projectile damage coming in, and the fight is going to be on in its way. Fire Strike's coming off on both sides. Reinhardt's generating incredible charge, or actually, it's just going to be mostly Cal, and Fractal being the first one to get first blood on Terminus, who has been terminated. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of really nice footsies here, and blue team just going and swinging the hammer and uh, just claiming the point here, completely pu uh, pulling up the space. And they're just going to go in. Like we said earlier, we're going to push right into the spawn room, can keep capitalizing on the advantages. Ooh, and D.Va looks like she almost got stalled out, but she, she is able to get away. And yeah, that Discord orb doing some incredible work from Team Safe Haven, whose ult percentages are skyrocketing. They already have Trans, Rally, and the Shatter. Definitely, and so we are going to hold here. We're probably going to see the Shatter out. It's going to be up for a big block here from Sinister, and there it is. We are going to get the uh, Zarya. It's going to get blocked here by Bouget with the charge. We're going to charge the Reinhardt, and also coming out for... Right. And this is that situation. The grab comes in. Cal swings right into it. He's already built up to another Shatter, and it goes out and catches the entire team of the Mean Greens. Oh no, such a bad situation. And that's exactly what they needed. They just held the momentum. A nice series of alts, uh, really great uh, Graviton coming out from Fractal, uh, holding them in the spawn here. And this is what we're talking about. Now we are going to see an ultimate advantage from our red team. We're going to see the counter play. We're going to see if we can get past this choke point. Yeah, Mean Greens, they absolutely have the tools to make this happen. They have the Diva Bomb, they have the Grav. Could be seeing a big nasty one coming out here. All right, Blue Team knows that they have an ultimate disadvantage and they're backing up accordingly. Coming under the big Graviton, blocked by the sound barrier. Diva Bomb's coming up from both sides. A huge from I Monkey. Big 3K, and Blue Team is going to quickly set up that fight. Uh, keep holding on a really great defense. Wow, Monkey actually did get fragged there towards the middle of the fight, right after they jumped out of mech to toss out that bomb. But while Harlequin wasn't able to get their bomb into good positions, and Yada able to duck behind the middle of that control room control point, the I Monkey bomb was a little more favored in its positioning. Now, we do have a Shatter coming here from Sinister and a Sound Barrier to back it up. There's a Transcendence that could really help out if that Shatter happens to go through. Now, it looks like we're going to whiff a Graviton, uh, but it's okay. We're going to rotate here, red side, onto the server, and there's that Shatter. The Transcendence is going to block it out. Uh, Lucio's going to speed the team away successfully, and we're going to just see all... Everyone's resetting. It's very hectic, but everyone is staying safe. The Sound Barrier is going to add the excess sustainability, and it looks like red team is going to be able to push this through. Yeah, losing the, rather, getting Cal taken out right as he got that shatter there means that any chance of clapping back for Team Safe Haven was removed from that fight the minute that happened. Unfortunately, though, that is going to be Barrier's Grav and probably, again, a bit of a shatter coming in for Team Safe Haven's retake. And that means Mean Greens has a nice little bit of ultimate advantage coming up. They're going to have to stagger them if they're going to hold this point for 100%. Definitely. Now, Blue is setting up aggressively. Red Team wants to hold the point for as long as possible. And that Shatter goes right through Sinister's shield. Uh. Gonna get an early initial pick, and we're gonna just roll through, push them back. Uh, they can't do a whole lot about this melee damage coming in, but it does look like we're going to come in. The Beat and the Grab are gonna trade, and we might see some value come out of the Steva Bomb. It does get shielded by Cal. The Boots and Beat Bomb is going to come out now, and we're also not gonna see any value there. Um, looks like everyone's gonna have to reset, and here's the Graviton. This could be a big... Just as I speak too soon, yep. the Transcendence comes in from 1DK, and it uh, looks like Blue Team is going to ultimately come out winning the fight with the Shatter just for good measure at the 99% yeah. over time. Cal's Shatter generation is obscene. I think that's the fifth Shatter they've thrown out in this match, and with only 141% generated on the point, that is ridiculous. Absolutely. Walking in with a big rocket hammer, it's just like we were saying with Sinister in the interview, what are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. All right, here we are going to be on Lijon Garden for our second map. All right, so this is where we're going to see uh, maybe the potential for some Pharaoh. We did see that on our last match with Luminescent Gaming. Uh, here is to see what we're going to end up walking out of the spawn room in with the next uh, 10 seconds to prepare. Unless the casters are getting baited, though, I think it's going to be Ana Goats from the Mean Greens. And Team Sea Haven, yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sticking with that Zenyatta. 
So now, what is, what is it? What, what is actual goats comp? Because I mean, for for accuracy, I mean, not not everything is goats. We should we should probably. Right. The the original goats was from the original that original team goats was the Moira. It was the Moira Brigitta and I believe the Lucio. And now the Brigitta becoming the staple. You see Anna getting a lot more action as the the little bit of a buff she got plus the brutal fury of her anti nade is too much to ignore. And now Mean Greens though, they're gonna be the ones taking the point position early. And when it unlocks, unless Team Safe Haven gets their way in there, they're gonna lose it early. But that's a big shield loss down. No more shield for Sinister. Yes, there's definitely a really big loss here, allowing the opportunity for our blue team to move in. However, red team, with their early point hold, is going to use these uh, central walls to their advantage, hold a very safe position, and uh, we're not going to allow the blue team in. Uh, we are going to see a really swift hold and uh, a nice, set, uh, well-earned percentage here for our red team. Yeah, the Mean Green's rotation, Sinister pulling back there when that shield went down means that that just means Harlequin and the Quacken have to do their duty as tanks and do their duty they did. All tanks on the Mean Green's are just about ready to hit their ultimates. Same can be said for Team Safe Haven, but it's a much more even matchup this time around. We are seeing almost six ults come out from our blue team with uh, almost a similar amount from our red. And we're going to start trading here. The Shatter coming out initially seeing nothing. The Sound Barrier to add that sustainability. Diva Bomb's trading. Oh no, I lost my camera. <laughs> and a nasty, nasty situation for Mean Greens gets developed pretty much to their favor. Lots of ults coming out for both teams, but Mean Greens is going to hold the point and they're still going to have a couple of abilities in the bank with more on the way as the team safe haven uh, getting rocked back on their heels a little bit. Definitely. Now we are going to reset here. Our blue team does have ultimate advantage. Cal's going to fearlessly walk in. Block that. Not block that shatter, actually, but it's okay. We have this sound barrier to pack it up. Uh, the big anti nade could take down the Brigette, but it unfortunately, or I'm sorry, fortunately, Guppy will live. Uh, we're going to start pushing it onto the point here. Cal with the massive shatter in and two initial picks here from the other two tanks is going to wrap up that fight. And we're going to see a blue team win here and another set of well earned percent. All right, and we're going to set up here on the bridge. Uh, let's see, we're going to have ultimates coming out from our red team. Now, it looks like we're going to rotate onto the backside of the point. Now, it's a um, massive thing to mention here, too. Fractal's Grav actually eaten by Harlequin. They did ultimately win the fight, no pun intended, but now that means Mean Greens just has all the more resources, and bam, there they go, Sinister getting off a big fat shatter as trans comes in to counter it a bit that's going to be no kills for me greens and there's cal's shatter again where do these things keep coming from <laughs> oh my goodness and a quick cleanup from our blue team with uh and that was a great shatter from sinister but my just the counter shatter in return <laughs> Oh, really gonna get some massive damage there and that it's really it's, it's little things like that that really decide these fights uh, So all right, we're going to start coming into a close to even game here as far as the overall score uh, One minute to one minute red team is going to rotate around to the back side of the point again We're going to avoid the Lucio boop. It's important You know, you don't want to just lose the fight before it even starts by getting booped off of the bridge It's happened too many times to everyone All right, diva bombs from both sides to engage are going to get a nice uh, a pick there from Harlequin. And now the barrier's coming out from both sides. Diva Bomb's being tossed into the fight. They went in with even ults, but it's going to be Mean Green Sinister ripping into the <laughs> Team Safe Haven. No Safe Haven for you, Sinister, almost building up to equal Cal's Shatter percentage. Once again, a feat that is not going unnoticed by the points percentage. Definitely. Great Diva Bombs to engage. Uh, Harlequin managing to get that initial pick and with the Shatter coming in to just finish the job. Now let's... Oh, and that's what we were just talking about. You don't want to just fall off the map like that and get booped. Uh, that, that's going to cost them this map. That, that's a team fight right there. Red team capitalizing on the advantage. Now we are going to uh, be safer now. Oh no! Oh, the Quacken, what did you do? You had the shatter, but there it is! Sinister gets back up on it! The minute Cal gets back oh, on the fire, no. what are you doing? Insane boops, and the point presence is there. Team Safe Haven has a major advantage now, de-mecking Harlequin. No, uh, but Cal coming back in! Overtime again, this is team fight territory. Team Safe Haven takes it, but Mean Greens only need this one next fight to win it. Wow, what a massive turnaround, and, it, and it's just uh, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away right there. With the Lord, of course, being Lucio Freyer, coming out with the double boop to clean out that fight. Yeah, that was filthy. 
Uh, mean Greens need to hustle along there, taking that long route. If they don't get on this point within a couple of percentage, there it is. They're forced to charge in super early. Harlequin drops their bomb out. That's not going to grab anyone this time around. No kills for either team yet, but the grab has come out. Trans coming to match it, and no one was there to fix up on it. They do get the Reinhardt charge, but they are going to grab the Ana. There it is. Team Safe Haven ripping apart the tanks and healers. This fight's going to them. The point will remain theirs. Wow, some great support alts coming out to keep our blue team alive. And just for good measure, we're going to pop the sound barrier. We're going to finish this fight. And wow, what an amazing match. Uh, team Safe Haven brings it out massively clutch with those uh, boops correcting for the mistake of falling off of the map. Uh, quite unfortunate, but just wow, being able to turn around. We are going to see the play of the game from Cal. Not surprising given the amount of... Oh, here it is right here on the first map. Is that a full team shatter? It was a full wow. team shatter. He caught literally everyone on the team. I'm amazed that some of them even made it out alive. Also, I love that you can pin someone against their own spawn entrance. That's just like pure disrespect. Injury. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are going to take a break here while we decide for the next map, as well as the hero saves and bans. We will be right back with you guys with more action. And yeah, now as a reminder, it is the losing team who is, or rather the winning team is going to start this off. They are going to pick a hero to save, and then they are going to ban a map for the rest of the match. And then the losers of this map, the Mean Greens, they are going to grab a hero to ban. And this means Team Safe Haven has that ban only, and only for this particular map. And then Mean Greens will then choose the map from the remaining maps in the pool. So let's see, uh, if I were Mean Greens right now, I'm going to ban Cal. I'm going to ban Reinhardt. <laughs> just ban Cal from the game. Yeah, just, just ban Cal. Like, Cal needs to go. <laughs> we're just getting uh, too yeah. much value out of Shatter. Like, just ban him. <laughs> in terms of that M MVP in the channel panels, by the way, which you should totally vote for, uh, that's exactly right. I just, Reinhardt, I, I feel bad because, you know, Sinister clearly likes playing the Reinhardt. But again, they can still play the Reinhardt. It just means you don't get those sick, awesome Reinhardt duels to play in. Uh, but I think Cal's proficiency was just too much and you need to take that away from them. But Yeah, I mean, just having that advantage of having an Earth Shatter and no shield in front of it. Uh, you, If there's a Reinhardt, you just need a Reinhardt or you need a really good Winston or maybe yeah. a really good Zarya. You know, something that can intercept that Shatter. Yep. Otherwise, you're just going to wipe it over and over. Yeah, and it's a dirty situation too. The uh, Unbelievably, you get that situation where what does team safe haven do they have a hero to save do they save the reinhardt or do they try to grab someone else maybe like lucio is you know very important to have for the composition that they were running the zenyatta as well having that discord orb was doing amazing work for them especially on that control tower so uh, control center Blah. Definitely. And we still have yet to decide what map is going to be coming next. Now, Lucio does get a lot of value on these King of the Hill maps, especially with environmental kill potential such as Ilios and Li Zhang Tower. Uh, we could definitely see more of that. Freyer was definitely popping off there, and it'd be awesome to see some more of that. Um, however, you know, we might see something a little more standard, maybe something... Uh... Oh, okay, looks like we're banning Eichenwald. Saving Zarya, the latest Zarya. news. There it is. I, I think that's it. I think we all know what Mean Greens is going to do next. Well, they're definitely not going to pick Eichenwald, but if I were them, I, yeah, that Reinhardt's got to go. <laughs> well, I'm curious uh, if they're going to be seeing the same thing that we do, because perhaps they uh, see a different problem. You know, uh, we're over here. We do get the nice overhead view. It's definitely different when you take that first person perspective and you're thinking on the fly. Uh, Definitely interested to see what Mean Greens does here. What's the play? The other problem, too. You ban the Reinhardt. What if Team Safe Haven has the filthiest dive on the planet? Like, do you really want to open up that can of worms? Because uh, now you've played a map against their, uh, you know, their goat's composition. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you figured out a way that you can counter it. Throw out some of that uh, fire. Oh, fire throw the they did it. it is. They did it. They <laughs> banned Ryan. And it's Hanamura. No, if it's no Hanamura, Ryan Hanamura. Plus. We're a dive isn't necessarily the strongest pick. Mm -hmm. Having a Reinhardt come through that choke, that's that's a bit of a thing. Uh, and on defense too, no Reinhardt, uh, that's gonna be some May, it's gonna be some pulled pork, probably. We're, I, I, I foresee an Arissa here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Now we are gonna see whether Team Safe Haven or Mean Greens will be starting on attack here. Uh, 
if I were Team Safe Haven again, defense. And yep, there it is. They're definitely going to go defense first. It's, in my opinion, and also statistically, I believe it is a stronger position to start from. Attack has to set the pace. And if they somehow fail to complete the map, then you have a much easier job. Yeah, I think this is a good move from Team Safe Haven, especially given that they are going to ban Reinhardt. Uh, it's going to kind of force them into a more defensive position because, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to either dive on attack or what are you going to run an attack or a I guess you could do a Hammond or something, but is that, is that still considered a dive? You know, we're, we're getting more into the, the more ethereal forms of Overwatch here where you're not necessarily strictly in that 2-2-2 two, two, two composition. Yep, and again, it's... Hammond is that kind of punchy, nasty hero, but Hanamura has shown to be a bit of a little bit of a tricky map, especially on that final point. Can can you know Hammond be used really well? Yeah, and we've seen it a bunch of times. But is Team Safe Haven the team that has that Hammond comp ready and practiced? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now we have seen quite a bit of improvisation out of a lot of the teams that we've been seeing throughout this whole tournament. Uh, so. I am definitely excited to see where this next match is going to go. We are now loading up Hanamura with Team Safe Haven on the defense. This, uh, I, Han Hanamura and me, we used to go way back. This was actually the first map uh, I ever played in Overwatch when I, you know, jumped into quick play for the first time back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was neat. It was fun. It was, you know, holds a lot of memories for me. It quickly became one of the most... Uh, of my most hated maps, but hey, like, it's fine. Right? Not gonna lie, this is this is one of my least favorite maps in the game. Yes. The reason being is just point B with that high ground, it's so hard to coordinate and take. And now, yep. not saying the map is unbalanced or anything. I just think that it's hard to coordinate on a ladder game that particular position. It is tricky with a small choke point going into the high ground and another high ground overlooking the point. There's there's three sets of high ground overlooking that point so if the defenders have that set up really effectively it can be very difficult to, to breach yeah and unless you have a regular group of players to play with you're probably playing ladder the way uh most people do it as a pickup game functionally so this is a team that you've never practiced with before like what what are you supposed to do to uh, on that particular situation speaking of team safe haven though they are a stacked team of six they know exactly what they're doing and wham bam look at this I don't see a second tank coming out, which means it could just be Freyer on the solo Orisa with a truckload of damage coming in. Now, excuse me, but is that a 4 DPS solo Mercy with an Orisa? So Team Safe Haven, uh, had, you know, I've seen this comp come out before, not necessarily from them, but this has some damage potential for sure. And with the Sombra there for the disruption, invading their backline, the Widow to set up threat from any position, the Pharah Mercy to split the attention to above. Um, well, let's just see what happens here. We are seeing our red team with goats here. They might just be able to brute force their way in, and it looks like they're just gonna speed right there to the point. Oh no, Mean Greens comes right onto the point with a Lucio speed boost, but it's gonna be on DK, picking up the kill first on Brigitte. Ana falls down next with no heals. This is gonna be a very difficult fight for Mean Greens to win, and lose it they will. Fractal picking up a nice couple of cleanup kills there at the end, demonstrating that even when it's Ghost, Widow has a place uh, and a role to play against it. All right, so I think on paper that play looked good, right? Hey, let's get to the point, guys. Let's speed through. <laughs> um, what they didn't account for was uh, for Fractal, Monkey, and 1DK to just kind of shoot them. Oof. Yeah, so weird uh, in Overwatch. <laughs> oh, sometimes will hit you. Uh, I, it doesn't happen a lot in my games because, of course, I dodge like the wind and have no uh, equal, uh, which is why, of course, I haven't you know broken into diamond until just now. But uh, Moon Greens, <laughs> having taken that into account, they're actually going to be switching over to a dive, which I was about to say against this particular squishy no composition is a solid I option realize. until Fractal plucked uh, Terminus out of the air like it was nothing. Yeah, that was insane. Tiny, tiny tracer hitbox there. Pinpoint precision there from Fractal. Really nice pick is going to delay our red team. Another Ooh. huge pick from Fractal on the main support from our red team. Wow. Um, really just going to be buying time here. We do still have 2 minutes 20 seconds on the clock. And Blue does have ultimate advantage here because of these swaps. With the compositional change, uh, the ultimates do reset when you swap heroes. So, uh, <laughs> we are going to be stocking up here. Yeah, and they keep the Guppy, I want to point this out, instead of hacking the D.Va, continuously is going after the Winston. And Ultimates, by the way, coming out from Team Safe Haven. Couldn't have predicted that at all, but instead, the D.Va isn't able to stop all of that barrage or the Dragons, and that's going to be a couple of punks. I, 1DK gets on the res. But yeah, the hacks have been going on to Winston. Can't get that dive started unless he has his boost. 
That's true. And yeah, so the, the strategy here from Team Safe Haven is to just keep buying time. Uh, and effectively, that is what you need to do on the defense. We want the fewest amount of fights possible if you're a defender. Ooh, and here now with the speed barriers boosting in, the hack coming in initially, but that's going to be the one sole tank for Team Safe Haven eliminated. And kills are going to start popping in for Mean Green. The Fractal clapping back pretty nicely, getting the rest of the kills. Dragon's getting dunked onto the point. It is going to grab the Hana. Didn't see that coming. But the presence should be enough for Mean Greens to pick this up and start point B. A nice series of picks from our red team DPS is going to secure that point. And uh, here's what we were talking about earlier. Point B, the uh, most hated part of Hanamura. This is the map that gives 2CP its reputation. And rightfully so. I, you know, Volskaya can be a bit of a pain in the arse, but Hanamura is just ugly. This is just a furious, furious team fight situation. Now, we are going to see our blue team setting up a cross-dive kind of situation, supporting our Widow from the op opposite high ground, and Monkey jumping in there from the ledge. Now, we're going to push into this choke, and here's what we're talking about. Getting through this choke is a nightmare. Yeah, and with Terminus losing the Widow duel initially, and then Flams is going to fall next. Fractal being set up over there, there is no counter to them right at this moment, meaning the dive of Mean Greens never gets a chance to get off the ground. They're always going to be down a member unless Fractal is dealt with. Now, I think what I might might want to consider here, there is an alternate route here that can be taken by the full team and the lower mega room that does go un unutilized. If the entire defending team is on the high ground, we still see Fractal posted up on the defender right side. Really nice pick there uh, from Terminus. It might get res, and we are going to see Genji coming out to clean it up for the res. <laughs> Oh, actually, no, the res did come out. Sombra does finish off the Genji, and uh, we're going to... Uh, oh, let's see. Blue might just hold this. Diva Bomb is going to push our red team out. We're going to get the pick on Terminus, and uh, that's just going to secure the defense here. We're going to see our Primal Rage come out here uh, from Sinister. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough to keep our momentum rolling here. We are going to have to reset this fight. All right, Diva Bomb does uh, come Harlequin out. does manage though. to get uh, the p two picks here. And uh, it might be enough to reset. Now, the blue team does have a defender's advantage here for our spawn. Uh, but if our red team can take a safe position, we do see the supports taking a safe position in the choke point. Uh, sound barrier is going to come in to help support the fight, and it might be just enough. The res is denied. Big pick here. And uh, just need to clean up iMonkey's D.Va in order to secure this point. I Monkey dives onto the point. We're not seeing a stall composition coming out from Team Safe Haven. They're going to be sticking with their usual players. And since Mean Green is so established here on the point, this really is only a matter of time. We are now finally seeing some stalls come out with a big EMP dropping onto Mean Greens, but unfortunately they're not able to get the picks to follow it up. Cal kind of lumbers onto the point with his Winston. Fractal gets picked off by Terminus, now demonstrating some superiority on the Widowmaker. Mean Green's probably going to finish this up, but now it's up to Team Safe Haven to see just how much time they can make them lose. We just need to get the focus on these big tanks. They are trying to pull out the big stall here. Uh, Team Safe Haven not quite able to pull it out, but did that manage to buy about an extra minute. And it looks like Mean Greens is going to end up taking both points of Hanamura. A very excellent, well-coordinated dive and great series of alts. Uh, Shoutouts to Harlequin managing to get two picks with a big Diva Bomb and Baby Diva play. Yeah, I uh, super liked how that Mean Green situation developed. Terminus losing that initial Widow duel, but instead turns out to be the counter to Fractal that they needed. They were able to deal with Fractal before their next push started. As they went for the res, Genji gets to dive in on the Mercy. The res does come off, but they lost a major source of healing, and it snowballed from there. Mean Green's never getting ousted from the point again, especially with thanks to that Diva Bomb getting tossed in to keep the fight going. And it's great, too, with the stall composition coming out from Team Safe Haven, the amount of coordination that uh, Mean Greens had with their focus fire and their ability to take down targets quickly is definitely going to be paramount in them winning the game despite having the disadvantage when it comes to the spawn timers. Uh, Blue Team being closer to the point, they are more readily available there to defend. Yeah, and you like seeing that. I would have liked to see possibly more stall come out a little faster from Team Safe Haven. Maybe they get more than the 2 minutes and 17 seconds left that they have on the clock off. You get, like, you know, the May comes out, the Reaper comes out, maybe Tracer comes out a little earlier. Terminus made that deletion a pretty quick affair, though. It, it can help a team to have that kind of stall in your back line, or rather, in your plan B, so to speak. 
Definitely. And now we are going to uh, see a fairly standard comp here. Going to keep Terminus on Widow, and we are going to see Gecko on Reaper. Uh, pretty interesting choice here. They might be uh, expecting some kind of dive composition, given that Reinhardt is banned for uh, Team Safe Haven. They did actually end up choosing a dive, and they were going to push right in here. And with this triple tank, triple healer dive, they're only going to have the Winston for the shields, and it is a flimsy shield. Diva with the slight defense matrix nerf that she just got is going to be doing some serious double duty. But unfortunately, Winston diving in, that means that's going to be a lot of damage coming in from Reaper that's going to be hard to get away, but it's 1dk that's going to pick up Terminus earlier on in the fight. Now, Gecko is going to rip over Cal, but the fight's actually going towards Team Safe Haven's favors with a little bit of more of a man advantage. Oh, and a big purple coming in here on two. Uh, team Safe Haven, Mean Greens, Anna able to get that really fat anti nade, and we're able to clean up the fight based on it. Now we are going to try to push back onto the point a little bit more, but it's not going to work out here. This is just this is just buying time, and I'm not sure if time is what we need. Um, Lucio, okay, there we go, there we go. Uh, the Quackens, Lucio, just trying to get those precious few extra seconds, and it looks like our tanks are going to push up and try to get every scrap of damage that they can. Um, a bit of a messy take, but well done here. <laughs> and, uh, 1DK comes out here. I hate Widow. Um, if, if, in case you didn't know, our, our match chat, we like to keep it rated G. Um, in order to discourage everybody getting distracted, you're only allowed to say GL, GG, GR, and I hate Widow. <laughs> it's a sentiment shared by most, probably even Widow players sometimes. Uh, so Team Safe Haven, though, taking advantage of their mobility. They're actually going to duck up onto that high ground. Reaper chases them away, but not before Fractal can grab the kill on the Kraken. That's going to be, again, major source of healing as the rally comes out in the big grab. It's only going to catch Terminus, and they're going to grab it without needing the Diva Bomb, which does fall off. It's not going to grab anything. Gecko getting utterly deleted on the Reaper, despite some incredible power. The Shatter comes out. It only grabs Fractal. Barrier's now going to keep Mean Greens alive, but now the same comes out for Team Safe Haven. Haven, and despite the spawn advantage, the man advantage is clear for Team Safe Haven. Wow, and we are definitely seeing a whole lot of chaos here. Red Team barely able to hold out against the uh, spawn advantage here. Now we are going to not really catch anything there with a series of two alts there. The Reaper ult, uh, really nice eat there from iMonkey. We are going to lose the mech for it. Another grab coming up from Fractal, generating such an incredible energy and pulling out yet another one in the same team fight. Hot Namora, sometimes it be like that. But with five and a half minutes left, now it's up to Mean Greens to stall for as much time as they can. Otherwise, they are definitely going to be on the attack first with some body blocking action coming in from Cal. They're going to keep them away with over five minutes left. Wow. Just wow. Uh, so just as uh, quickly as we are able to really focus everyone down on that point, here we are with... Uh, Team Safe Haven able to just decisively take that point with almost twice the time. Oof, oof, oof. So now Mean Greens is going to have to take over the attack on Hanamura. Team Safe Haven, once again, on the job of repelling them. It is perfectly possible for Mean Greens to complete Hanamura again, but the cards are definitely going to be stacked against them. And then Team Safe Haven has, again, like you said, more than twice that time. All right, so we are going to have to come up with something quick and decisive here with only two minutes on the clock. It's two rounds of ults at best, maybe three. We are at a pretty high level, so we might be able to squeeze three rounds of ults here in two minutes. Um, and that's going to really be the deciding factor. Can we get a quick, safe position before the ult advantage is a factor? Uh, or can we get the damage first so that we have ults first? That's really what it's going to boil down to here for our attacking team. Yep, yep, yep. So Mean Greens picking a composition that is filled with fast alt generators. They have Tracer and Genji, especially if Genji can nail those sweet shurikens. You know, the healers coming in, Ana, Lucio, perfect for that speed. What were, again, a very nice dive. No sniper up. Whoa, Terminus. Terminus coming onto the Widowmaker for those early picks. But we do see Fractal on the Bastion and a uh, Arissa shield to hide behind as well. Now, this is something that we just saw in our last match. Uh, Arissa Bastion ultimately was the game-winning move. So we're going to see if we're going to see similar results here on this match. Uh, it looks like being Greens, they do scout the Bastion. They're going to dive right on top of it. A coordinated dive. Ooh, and it's not going to be enough. There's too much coming in from Team Safe Haven in terms of the shields, the Mercy Res, and whatnot. Bastion's going to get res, and they're going to grab Harlequin on the DMAC while they're at it. But there's not going to be any more reses coming in for Team Safe Haven, though. They know that, and they are grabbing as many kills as they can. So uh, they go in. They get shredded by Bastion. They get shredded by Orisa. I'm not sure jumping right on top of them was the play. 
Yeah, they got, again, they got the Bastion in the end. It immediately got rezzed, though, and they paid too much of a price for it, especially in terms of ult charge. Fractal Mercy already have what they need to finish out this fight, and the only thing coming out for Mean Greens is going to be Sights, which is nice, but not a game changer. Definitely. We are going to see a Valkyrie as well as a Bastion tank all here. Uh, Red Team is going to engage. We're going to see the quick dive. Genji goes in. We do manage to take out the Bastion right away. And we are going to see the Genji all coming out with the uh, Blue Team Valkyrie to support. Uh, we are managing to get kick kills here. Gekko popping off and Terminus cleaning up right after. It looks like Red Team is going to decisively take this point. Guppy pulling out the hog ult at the last minute. They are going to grab Sinister's Winston, but unfortunately not going to be enough. They are going to be starting moving in. Harlequin grabbing that reset so they can jump back into their mech as quickly as possible, which is going to be useful given the tasty diva bomb that could be coming. All right, so here's the moment I was personally waiting for. Cal on Hammond. Yes. Yes. We have a very, very punchy defense. No shields, all damage. All right, I'm not sure uh, Cal has spent a lot of time on Hammond. We're seeing this grapple. What is that intentional? Maybe it is. Okay, I don't know what I'm oh! talking about. He's gonna go and get a really, really big uh, push there. No. Ultimately gets slept for it. Uh, Diva bomb coming out from I Monkey. Uh, doesn't manage to catch up We do manage to take down uh, Bastion, but we do trade for Sinister's Winston. Um, wow, just taking these corners too. Uh, Terminus able to pick uh, one DK on the Mercy. That's gonna be a big pick. Uh, however. Uh, mean Green, or I'm sorry, not Mean Green, uh, Team Safe Haven is going to manage to clean up after, and uh, I'm not sure it's looking too good for Mean Greens right now. Yeah, no, a lot, a lot committed to that fight. Gecko is going to have their blade, so they're going to have Nano Blade for this next push, which won't happen because there will be no overtime. Oh, what? out of nowhere, Sinister, what even are you? Solidify with one overtime. HP. With one HP, manages to get the overtime. Harlequin managed to get that last call as well. We are going to see Fractal come out with the alt, and that's a quick clean up. Uh, minefield just to block that Genji ult, and oh hey, just to transcend this for good measure. We are going to go ahead and nano it, but this is more or less a done deal. I love that coming out from Mean Greens. The fight ain't over until the fat Athena sings, and there you have it. Mean Greens does complete point A. They still have a shot at winning Hanamura. All right, GRs all around. Uh, it's good to see some good sportsmanship coming from both sides of the main. You know, that's a uh, really something that just is, is really pleasant to see. You know, even though things are heated, tensions are high, adrenaline, adrenaline is pump, uh, pumping through everyone's veins, uh, but we still take a moment to uh, just appreciate the skill of the opposing team. Yeah, I, I know that in situations, even when I'm getting my butt handed to me, sometimes I just have to sit back and think, geez, that was really good. I don't usually think that in the heat of the moment sometimes. I am, after all, only human. But yes. I hate Widow. Yeah, <laughs> and there we have it. The now, however, Mean Green's going to be taking a leaf out of the playbook from Team Safe Haven. Going to be throwing out a Bastion of their own, and they're going to have a two thousand HP shield to throw in front of that. Now it's interesting. There's there's a couple pretty major differences between how Arissa interacts with Bastion and how Reinhardt interacts with Bastion. Because now consider Reinhardt's got a big rocket hammer, right, and Arissa's got a Gatling cannon. In terms, so, of, in terms of getting that position set up and maximum firepower, you definitely want the Orisa. In terms of letting the Bastion do his duty with Terminus in the high ground, ah, that's, that's, a, that's a fun situation to be in. Definitely. We are going to hopefully see some really great picks come out from our defending Widow. All right, and our blue team coming out with uh, something resembling a dive composition. We do have three tanks, three support. Uh, we are going to see those dive tanks, but with Brigitte and... Uh, Unfortunately, Cal does get immediately shredded by Gecko's Bastion. It's yeah, they were taking the long way around. They didn't have the speed boost up. They were pretty much just walking out in open territory. Now the rest of the team is gonna stay in here while they wait for Cal to get back on the Hammond, which means he's gonna be back very quickly. But they have yet to deal with that Bastion. Now Terminus is looking for some good picks here, oh, and he's gonna get harassed by Cal on Hammond. Uh, manages to get away, but this is gonna be the sign of the engagement. Uh, we are gonna dive in now that we have a full team of six to engage with. Oh, and there's the barrier down from Sinister, who almost gets immediately taken down to half health. Then the hits start coming in big time for the team Safe Haven. They're going to get their D.Va d mech but Gekko clapping back. He already has his ultimate. He's firing into the point, but there's no one left to fire for. But he somehow rips apart the tanks like they're butter, and that tank configuration is just ridiculous. We do manage to get two, almost three ticks off of this fight, uh, but ultimately... Uh... There it is. Cal manages to clean it up to get all three ticks. 
uh, finishing that 1v1 against Gecko's Bastion. The importance of map control over actually, you know, going after the enemy team. Team Safe Haven, they rotated onto the point. Mean Greens wasn't able to get through that door. They built percentage that whole fight. Definitely, yeah, that was definitely smart play and good positioning uh, from Team Safe Haven. And uh, we're going to not swap off the Bastion. We're going to actually keep that Bastion Terminus uh, with the sights right now is going to allow me, Greens, to see uh, every move. And we're going to engage here on the high ground. Guppy going in with the uh, Brigette Shield. They're going to counter it with the Zarya Bubble. And this right. is going to be a Team Safe Haven fight where they only need the single tick. And they have a pretty solid set of ults coming in. So does Mean Greens, however. It's going to be who can force the other team to throw out that first big boom. And with 3 minutes 50 seconds, Mean Greens has the work cut out for them. Now, smart positioning here from Mean Greens, but unfortunately, they are getting boxed into a corner. Uh, the Shatter sees nothing. We are going to see Harlequin with the oh! massive Diva Bomb. Huge! All right, and that's the fight. That's what happens. Uh, you get a quick 3K, one pick from Terminus, and that's it. Uh, team uh, Safe Haven is going to be forced to back out. Now, they didn't really commit a whole lot to that fight. They did only give Cal's ult away. We're going to come up on five alts against one Bastion ult. Yeah, nasty situation to be in, but Mean Greens is showing that they're willing to take this all the way to the end. Termin is still set up there, doesn't really have a lot to uh, hurt him. But Team Safe Haven does have quite the ult repertoire coming in, but we've seen what Gecko can do with that tank. Now we are going to see a safe push here. All, all, okay, all blue team has to do right now is press Q. In theory. In theory, and it is a big risk, but there's going to be... Cal's going to go up and threaten the Widowmaker, but Ter Harlequin's going to be able to chase them away, and they're not going to be there for that fight. Once again, they're stuck on that high ground. Team Safe Haven unable to find a good, solid way to break in. It's going to be Cal going onto the point. That's going to force Mean Greens to rotate as they only have a tick to work with. And they are going to force the fight here with a great distraction. If we can get that... Oh, okay, so we're going to have the Transcendence come through. It is going to defend against the Graviton. And uh, let's see, looks like... Uh, didn't hold get it too much value out of that Bastion ult. We are going to see a couple picks here coming from our tank line. Uh, and ultimately, looks like they're going to clean it up here. Yeah, Team Safe Haven just had too much bringing to bear. And Bastion did some incredible work there. Transcendence difficult to block. A big tank shell coming at you, but ultimately the kills are going to come in for Team Safe Haven. It's going to be major stall time for Mean Greens, but what we just saw from their offense, we're going to see now from Team Safe Haven. They've maintained a point presence. They have their target focus. This is going to be it, unless Mean Greens pulls out a great reversal, which I don't think can happen with just a Hammond and a Diva. All right, well, we do still see two beefy tanks on the line. We did just lose the mech, and that is an alt coming out. There's the sound barrier to counter the alt. We might get just enough salt time with the sensor monkey coming out. Doofus coming out, and if we can get a pick, this could be a game changer. Zenyatta is going to kill uh, Sinister. We're going to see I Monkey downing Terminus as well, and Blue Team is going to clean up this fight. The stall wasn't enough, and we are going to see Team Save Haven with the victory on Hanamura. No. Yeah, Team... Mad props to both teams, especially Hanamura being the difficult map that it is, but Mean Green's credible offense, little rough on the defense, unable to stop a snowballing Team Safe Haven from coming off a pretty solid point A. Really tough fight, but they had the ultimates going into it. Like you said, the, the quantity of Qs available to Team Safe Haven just proved to be a bit too much. Definitely. And it did turn out to be a little more complicated than just going in and pressing the button. They did have to position with intelligence here in order to manage not getting shredded by Mean Green's Bastion there. Uh, so really good positioning there. Really good play from both sides. Uh, excited to see round three here. And guys, don't forget, uh, vote for MVP down there on the Twitch panel. Who do you think has been popping out most? We will announce it here at the end of the match. Love seeing who grabs that one. Like seeing sometimes it's not even the you know the player who really did the best. Sometimes it's the player who was just the gosh darn most entertaining. And another thing, we're gonna see the band, the rather the saves coming out just a little bit faster this time around. Team Safe Haven saving the Zarya, probably considering what map to get rid of. Definitely, and it looks like we're gonna ban Ilios here. It's an interesting choice, uh, especially yeah. given how uh, well Li Zhang Tower went for them. Yep, and Ilios is one of those you know. Uh, King of the Hill type situations that I actually super enjoy. Again, the variety of compositions you can bring out, especially for the well. Ugh, love it. Definitely, but we won't be seeing that today now. Uh, we are going to see Mean Greens banning a hero and selecting a map now. Uh, now, I'm honestly, I, I, I can't even predict what they might want to do. Uh, it's just, 
both teams are so coordinated. They ha seem to have a pretty good variety in what they can do compositionally, especially uh, seeing Team Safe Haven not really phased by the Reinhardt ban, actually. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. Again, they the the solo tank solo mercy uh defense on hanamura was pretty awesome and they you know they made it work for as long as they could but ooh, here we go now mean greens banning a zenyatta and selecting dorado a straight escort map wow okay so zen and dorado ban zen on a high ground map this is gonna significantly weaken dive yeah, that's a nasty situation to be in. Uh, Team Safe Haven, again, probably going to elect to start out on that defense as it worked so well for them on Hanamura, allowing Mean Greens to set the pace, which they did quite well finishing the map, which is uh, you know huge for off the initial offense of any situation like that. But Dorado, though, that's rough. Escort, where well, you only have to get the map a certain few meters if they don't complete it, boo. Well, we will be seeing in just a moment which side that Team Safe Haven decides to choose first. You know, I think and I agree with you. Um, I, I, I would opt for defense here, especially, okay, let's say we ban the Zen on a high ground map. What are we going to do about it? Well, if uh, Bean Greens is able to set the pace and Team Safe Haven has a good reaction, it could just stop them right in their tracks. But then on the other hand, um, if Mean Greens is allowed to set that pace and they're able to keep that pace, that lack of Discord Orb could really make it difficult. Um, you're not really going to be able to see... Uh, like an effective strong melee composition such as goats either without that damage boost mm -hmm. they tech you know they, they could possibly run it with the ana but they've shown a much more rather affinity towards the zenyatta like like having that discord orb you know and a little extra healing and of course some great damage to boot really tasty stuff but on this dorado which they are going to be starting on on defense they have a a few options to go with especially since dorado is no stranger to some of those high ground using dives Right, definitely. And of course, we did see how versatile Kyle is on all forms of main tank, whether that's Reinhardt, Orissa, or Winston. Uh, oh, we even saw Hammond. Uh, I'm not sure if we consider Hammond a main tank. That's, I guess that's community perception, but he is big. Yeah. He's got a ton of HP and is really good at claiming space, so I suppose we could put him in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he... Uh, despite the uh, hate for Widow, I haven't seen any distaste for Hammond, really, and his crowd control ability is really solid. And for a map like Dorado, again, where you can switch high ground on and off, just left and right, having a hero like Hammond in your repertoire helps massively. All right, we have 27s to assemble your heroes. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to be in the comms of Team Safe Haven right now, thinking, okay, we have Azaria still, but they banned Zenyatta. What can we possibly do? Once again, though, the Reinhardt is back, so we could just uh, see something utilizing that classic combination, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see. All right, so we always got to look at the defenders first. They will be rolling out of the spawn here, and it looks like we're going to see something pretty standard. Just a little bit uh, off matter with they may here. Fractal is going to be taking that out of the spawn room, and um, right as I say that, Fractal is going to turn around, walk back to the spawn room, walk out of the spawn room yet again, Asme. Okay, so um, I, I think they're just intentionally messing with me at this point. They're definitely, I think, you know, they're actually, they are on a bit of a stream delay, but you know that they're just like, all right, you know what, we just have to make sure the casters, uh, we want to make them sound like, you know, total silly heads. So yep. that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> but they're still going to be pulling out the triple support, and really, I'm going to call it triple tank, May's ability to stop people in uh, their tracks without really putting out too much damage. Uh, let's call it two and a half tank. <laughs> <laughs> 2.5 tanks. 2.4 it's, it, it, it's, it's a three 2.5. <laughs> May is their sole damage. That is going to rely a lot on the Reinhardt and the D.Va, and especially that Brigitte to be tossing damage downrange. Alrighty, and we are going to be approaching this choke point. This is a hard choke to break, and now we are going to see the payload just crash right through that May wall. An engagement quickly happening. Uh, coll collision with Brigitte and Reinhardt there. Uh, no alts yet, so uh, it's just going to be the straight Ryan on Ryan battle. And the first pick is really going to matter because we do see it open up from the quack and taking down Guppy on Brigitte. Uh, red team buying the space and blue giving it to them, which is a smart move. Now uh, we are going to see the shatter come out to clean this up. And uh, let's see, Sinister did get that shatter first. It's a little bit of role reversal going on here. Yeah, Cal wasn't too far behind, but when you're swinging for the hills like that Sinister was, 
I, you know, we all know who's going to get that first, and what an incredible press coming in from Mean Greens, leaving their Ana on the cart as is customary, and going full on with a bit of an Ana advantage coming in from the Quacken. Now, Rally is also going to come out, keeping them all up. Big Shatter goes in and gets blocked by the shield. The Grav comes in as well, and Lucio dies before he can get his barriers. Oh, oh Freyer, no. Oh my god. I was just thinking in my head as that push is happening. Oh man. Oh man. Cal's got that shatter. They knew that Cal had that shatter. Sinister was on point with that block and what a grab to follow up. Cleaning up that fight and leaving our red team Mean Greens in an extremely aggressive position. Yeah, excellent play. I love seeing the ult tracking coming out now from Mean Greens. Demonstrating that, yeah, no, we're back and we're here to play. Alright, Sinister with yet another shatter. Oh, and Fractal's going to be the one who opens this fight. Mean Greens no longer setting the pace for the battles. Diva Bomb flying out, not going to grab anyone, but the damage is pretty much almost done. The, you know, the Mean Greens managed to grab that Ana back, but this fight's pretty much for Team Safe Haven, and the payload will finally stop. So I blinked. Uh, Harlequin Diva Bombed, and the team was dead before the bomb was even out of her hands. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty quick one. <laughs> All right, we are going to see a little bit of posturing as we reset here. Sinister just trying to, uh, I don't know, maybe he's trying to fake the alt charge. That is a little bit of high-level metagaming that goes on uh, between high-level Reinhardts. Uh, shatter is the primary method of alt generation, so generally, if you're still throwing that fire strike, it means that the Reinhardt doesn't have alt. We might not be expecting that Sinister to put up so quickly. We are going to see that massive shatter blocking down the Nano Ryan, taking out precious seconds. A huge purple coming in onto Sinister. A big barrier coming in to defend as well. And it uh, looks like uh, the Nano Reeve is going to go over there and get slapped. A big grab here from Kraken. Um, the barrier is going to defend against it though. And it might be just enough to claim a victory here for our blue team who is managing to push everyone away from the cart. 1DG coming in to clean up the fight. And it uh, looks like uh, Team Safe Haven is going to manage to win this, leaving no survivors. That was a veritable old apocalypse that just happened there. Fractal manages to come away with their grab intact, however, and they will be the sole alt holder coming into this next push, meeting into Lean Green's three-minute claim to point B. Oh, so close, but a very good point to hold for the Team C game. Now, we are seeing a bit of an ultimate advantage coming out from Team Safe Haven. Uh, this could be a difficult push, however, we are seeing high ground control. Uh, a bit of a duel between Harlequin and Eye Monkey going down there. Meanwhile, Reinhardt, Rui Reinhardt, and a big Graviton coming out. All right, and the Diva Bombs, we're not going to see anything with it. But uh, we are going to get massive value out of Fractal's grab, and it is going to be a decisive victory with just one ult. Yeah, and that's going to give everyone else the chance they need to build up theirs. Harlequin, you know, they're going to grab their mech back, but will they get out without getting staggered? Looks like that answer is yes. So they make it good, but Cal building up to a shatter. Big ults now coming in for Team Safe Haven, who is doing a great job of pushing Mean Greens back up further so that they can't be fighting on that precious cart. Now we are going to... Uh take it a little bit slower it looks like red team and blue team both coming up with some alts it looks like the advantage is still for uh team safe haven here all right and here oh, it is we're going to right the Cal shield nothing oh, unfortunate all right but it's okay because we are going to still see the Reinhardt swinging away more alts coming out Cal coming out with the Nana Ryan we do see two casualties come out from the shatter and one cleaned up by I monkey's diva bomb there on the corner, we're going to see Fractal come out and clean up the rest of the red team. And we're going to push in very aggressively, get them back to the spawn where they came from. Team Safe Haven showing the ability to get a nice little bit of an ult stagger there. Saving their barriers, saving their Zarya grab, while Mean Greens does a great job with that push of bringing those ultimates out onto the field and generating some for their own. This could be the push where Mean Greens turns it around. Definitely, and the ultimates are going to be in favor of Mean Greens as well. We definitely could see that reversal coming through. However, Blue Team coming through with a uh, very aggressive Graviton positioning very forward. We're going to see the sound barrier for good measure and a big and a yellow grenade to keep the team alive. Cal's going to come in and follow up with a shatter, picking off two members of the red team and forcing them back into the spawn yet again. Ooh, and Gaggy, what DK, what are you doing? Kicking the stagger to a new level. Crushing Is that a top 500 detail. Anna? Urgh, I think it's a, a top 500 IQ play, that's for sure. Holy right, moly. Big brain there for and, and huge mechanics as well. Just popping off big grenade and big shots going in there. 
Mm -mm -mm. However, Mean Greens, once again, they threw no ultimates into that fight, and they have the repertoire going in. Big Diva Bubba. The Shatter comes in with the Diva Bubba, catches Fractal on the ground alone and dead. All right, but we are going to see Nano Cal, a terrifying proposition. Oh no, Quack in his corner gets slept. He is going to blow the grab. Um, might be able to pull Cal through out of it. Yes, we did manage to kill Cal with the grab. It gra uh, the grab did, did get the value it needed. We're going to manage to push through with the high charge Zarya and our melee damage to push out Team Safe Haven. We might be able to collect the cart, however. Uh, there is going to be time for just one more fight. We're going to see Mean Greens pushing in to manage to uh, force this overtime. We don't want to see this fight end before the point is where it belongs. We are going to see the rally come through. Massive shatter! Absolutely massive shatter. And oh, the Viva Bomb does not manage to get anything from my monkey. However, we're going to see Red Team come through, push out with the Reinhardt and Brigitte. Uh, this is this is going to be a big fight, very decisive. The transcendence coming through the block of Graviton. Uh, although Sinister was purple, we did not manage to see the casualty. Uh, we are seeing Mean Greens coming out with the picks, kill feed, lighting up red, and we are going to manage to take this point. Yeah, just team <laughs> Safe Haven not able to get the kills they need to turn that into a fight. And instead, Mean Greens actually flips it right around, getting a full team wipe as once again they leave the off healer behind on the cart to drive it home while Mean Green starts up on an incredible full court press. A hugely aggressive push, and they do have alts coming up, however, to support alts for Team Safe Haven. Harlequin, unfortunately, is asleep. He is going to get woken up by a stray Lucio. Uh, all right, and we are going to see Team Mean Greens, or I'm sorry, uh, Safe Haven push in and Cal gets picked. Unfortunately, we do trade for Gecko, and here comes the Grav Bomb combo. We're going to manage to get the uh, Healer 1DK, and that might be just enough. A huge shatter coming through from Sinister. Uh, we do trade him, but the rest of his team does manage to clean up, and we're going to buy more time here and payload progress. Uh, we are going to see one more fight here with enough time before the point sees its destination. Uh, Cal does have shatter. He's going to trade with Terminus here for Brigette and he managed to stall for long enough with that Brigette that we don't see Cal managed to get that shatter in time Mean Greens does manage to take the point with just enough time very dirty fighting Team Safe Haven never really recovered after that Dorado point B and Mean Greens didn't let them either no breathing room at all means Team Safe Haven can never really get back into the fight they can't get the ults generated to get any kind of foothold Mean Green's target focus just unbelievable, picking off Safe Haven left and right. No Safe Haven for Team Safe Haven. And Mean Green's finishes Dorado with time left despite going into overtime uh, on point B, which is nice. Yeah, definitely. 30 seconds on the clock is a big deal. They get to buy that in case Team Safe Haven manages to get three points as well. Both teams will uh, get to keep their accumulated time. So uh, the match is far from over here. Hmm. Team Safe Haven now? They definitely have their work cut out for them. Can they beat that time? Sure. Mean Green's showing the dominance, however, that they have been on Dorado. That's uh, not going to be an easy thing to do. And with no Zenyatta to boost their damage, whilst Mean Green gets to take full advantage of that Discord orb, that's a nasty sitch. Definitely. And it's almost like something clicked here for Mean Greens. We are definitely seeing a much stronger showing than we were seeing in the last game. Uh, it's uh, They didn't want to go down without a fight, and they're really showing it here. Uh, with that 30 seconds, I mean, I'm just looking back on it now, how those fights went. When they saw the advantage, they really pushed on it. Uh, they decided, hey, we're not going to let Safe Haven just walk on us. We're going to walk on them instead. Yeah, the... <sighs> Team Safe Haven, again, like, they... This is match point for them, so, you know, they have more maps to play should they lose Dorado here. Me Green's having a much more big of a fight to fight, and they're, again, going to come out swinging, engaging Team Safe Haven before that cart even pulls the green. But how, and yuck, wow, unbelievable. That's going to be Guppy going down first, but Harlequin grabs the D-back, and Cal showing his propensity as a swinging Reinhardt. 77% ult charge, and it's been 20 seconds into the fight. He'll have a shatter before I can blink at step 20 dies. So it looked uh, it looked like a sneaky play there, hiding behind red. Uh, unfortunately, we did see one DK scout that out almost immediately from the sky, clearly giving a uh, warning to the team. Now we did see Guppy uh, fall early, but with the spawn being right there, only 10 seconds out of play, uh, and this it's way more costly for Mean Greens to lose 
players right here than it is for Team Safe Haven. Now we are going to see the big shatter come out for Cal. Uh, the transcendence to block it. 1DK raining rockets down from the sky. We're going to see the big counter shatter here from Sinister able to clean that up and push Team Safe Haven back into the spawn. Uh, despite 1DK with the really nice anti nade. 1D uh, uh, I'm sorry, not 1DK and Anna. Freyer is on Anna. Uh, 1DK not able to clean up on Farah, And we are going to see a reset here. Yeah, uh, Mean Green's getting, you know, kicked back a bit there, but Team Safe Haven was really able to push it through. Mean Green's instead, they coalesce into a really dirty defense, and they push Team Safe Haven all the way back to the spawn. However, they're going to come out swinging with four ultimates. It's going to be up to Terminus and the Quacken, possibly the Gecko as well, to turn that ult advantage into an ult equality. Now, here's the thing. 1DK, look at look at the position. And 1DK is hovering over the sky. This is going to be a sneaky Pharah ult. There it is, there's the grab to start it up, and the barrage to finish it. Wow. And that's the all she wrote. Diva flying up there, not enough to stop 1DK from doing their solemn Fara duty. Justice, chance, 100% precipitation. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like the uh, weather here on the west coast over the past week. Alrighty, so... Now we are going to see blue team posturing forward just a bit, even before the point is before. Um, sorry, the point is beyond the double door, and just gonna poke for some of that ultimate charge. Now <laughs> we are seeing a massive ultimate advantage here from Mean Greens, and they are rightfully going in very aggressively. They're going to start getting value out of those alts right away. And there it is, the huge trade! Oh my goodness, two shatters colliding, and we're going to see more alts coming out and trading now. The kill feed is lighting up red, not getting a whole lot of uh, value out of the Harlequin alt. However, we are going to keep pushing into the spawn. Red team getting massive value out of the push at the very least. I, uh, when you see kill feeds light up like that, you know, with this brand new kill feed, of who dies from what, Dying from the actual shatter, like dying from the actual grab itself, that just rankles. Ugh, and especially when it's both Reinhardts tossing the shatters out at the same time. Well, the, you know, one rocket hammer definitely did the duty uh, compared to the other one. And again, Team Safe Haven gets sent back to spawn. Alright, so 1DK over here setting up for another barrage. However, we are going to see Harlequin shut that right down. Uh, she's not going to lose mech for it. And we are going to see, wow, just like, what is this? Super grab! Oh my goodness, but a really great transcendence there from Flams is going to prevent any casualties. We have not seen anything on the kill feed yet. Both teams being very defensive and neither all managing to get a whole lot. We are going to see the sound barrier enable the engagement here from Gecko. Or, I'm sorry, from Guppy, and now we are going to see Gecko fall. Uh, Cal manages to go into the massive positioning, going and swinging the hammer, and 1DK able to clean up this fight with the tank support, pushing Mean Greens out, and we're going to see some payload progress here. Cal uh, is disgusting. 40% uh, to his next shatter, dishing another one out in that fight after getting so recently uh, his comeuppance from another shatter. Uh, Team Steve Haven also giving Mean Greens a little bit of taste of their own medicine, getting that full court press going. Alrighty here, so we are going to set up on the high ground here for Mean Greens. Now, uh, we can't count Sinister out. He has been definitely coming out here with a ton of huge, fat, high-value shatters, and I feel I have a feeling we're about to see another one. If we can manage... Oh, never mind. Spoke too soon. Cal did just manage to get all off of that last fire strike, and this is what it's going to boil down to. Another ult of Palooza. A great transcendence. Whoa! And 1DK with the big barrage. Now, these combos, we're just getting massive value out of this grab barrage combo. However, we did trade for three for three on that fight. Now, we are pushing the payload through the garage now at this point, and Mean Greens uh, still has their spawn room. They're going to respawn here. We're going to reset. Not a whole lot lost. Uh, we did trade some alts. Uh, however, Mean Greens does still have the ultimate advantage, so they are still sitting in a fairly safe position at this point. It's an interesting choice to throw out so many alts so early into this payload push. There are going to have a rally for this fight, but Sinister has that shatter, Quacken has that grab, and if Sinister tosses that shatter and Quacken tosses that grab, Sinister's gonna get shatter again. And Mean Greens is showing some really sick proficiency on this El Dorado map, but can Team Safe Haven clap back? Oh, well, we're gonna see. This is gonna be a massive fight here. This is gonna be the fight that determines if it's 30 seconds or two minutes left on the clock. The shatter goes right into a shield, but the grab comes out shortly after Sinister, after Sinister building up some even more ult charge. They, Team Safe Haven has to go running for the hills again, but they're able to build up some ult of their own, getting a mana ready. Fractal maybe even gonna have grabs. 
And, uh, well, 1DK, we're not seeing 1DK on the fair anymore. They did shut that down. We are seeing a triple tank composition with three support yet again. Uh, now, however, we do have Gecko with Sound Barrier ready just in case Fractal comes out with that grab. All right, we are going to see the Reinhardts going in, posturing against each other like two Rams butting heads. Rocket flails moving in. Now we are going to see Cal taking a safe position. We bump into each other with the Brigette. And there it is. There's the Big Shatter. Does get blocked by the Zarya. However, two uh, of the blue team does go down. And Cal with the response. We are going to see a blue team Diva Bomb come in. Uh, well, it looks like we have iMonkey on Lucio popping off as well. And uh, we are going to, with relatively little spend, win that fight here. Team Safe Haven looking for the payload to push in. Harlequin is going to try to get that stall with Terminus to back up. The full team is here ready and going in with a nice nade for support. We are managing to push out Team Safe Haven. Yeah, uh, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. Team Safe Haven gets at the brink of victory completely shut down and Mean Greens is not without the ults to show that they can stop this next push coming in. All right, now we do still have the sound barrier in the back pocket. Fractal ready for the grab, uh, and iMonkey also ready with a beat of his own. Um, here it is. All right, the opening grab. We're going to see some trades here, and there it is, the second grab and the beat. It's almost uh, like we're fortune tellers, right? And there's the shatter now. Big shatter here from Sinister. We're going to see uh, Pierce right through that barrier, get a whole lot of value. We did trade two for one right there. The Diva Bomb might be able to, the deciding factor here, but we are seeing Red Team light up the kill feed for a significant hold here. At best, we have one last fight here for Team Safe Haven, but we are going to stall 1DK for as long as possible in the Baby Diva form. Mean Greens is now in a great position. This could be the start of a reverse sweep for them. <gasps> All they have they to let her get the mech back. Oh, oh, they didn't. Okay. No, it's a double stagger. Nope, 1DK it. now completely eliminated from this next battle. Cal gets slept. No ult charge generation while you're napping on the job. Rally's coming out from, uh, rather, the Nando's coming out from both sides. It's going to be a full force fight on the payload and definitely going in the way of the Rocket Hammer and the Rocket Mace from Mean Greens. That's going to be the end of Team Safe Haven on Dorado, and we are going to a round four. Wow, what a comeback. Mean Green's really pulling it together here on Dorado, showing some really impressive coordination and all usage to ultimately secure that victory. A great defense uh, from Team Safe Haven, but just not enough. Um, and we are going to uh, move here on to our next map. Uh, play the game, the, the Sinister's earlier shatter, grabbing for killing more, but that play is done and over, it is time for the next fight, and this time, Mean Greens is going to have to save a hero and ban a map while Team Safe Haven, they get to ban a hero from Mean Greens. Alright, and Ilios is going to stay banned. Those map bans do stack. Uh, so we are left with, uh, let's see, we played Hanamura, they banned Ilios, we played Lijong. They banned Icon Pods. Yeah. Icon yeah, so for this particular situation, I it's I don't even know what you go with it here. Uh, maybe ban anything other than an escort map, given how amazing Mean Greens was just now. I, assuming they can translate that to some of the others, that good lord, that was disgusting. Definitely. And Team Safe Haven, though, they do have the ability to ban a hero. Um, so we're going to see the tides turned a bit. Um, now, do we have any predictions for what you think they might ban? I think Team Safe Haven, let's see, coming out, maybe they'll ban Reinhardt. Uh, think, yeah, you know, Sinister it's, it's, really did. Yeah, it's been, it's been turned around a bit, and where Cal, again, generating shatters left and right, Sinister was the one who got more value, I believe, out of each press of that Q. And mm -hmm. Moon Green seems to be a little reliant on that, da, uh, that Reinhardt Zarya composition. They're going to choose to save D.Va, interesting choice. They are going to ban Hollywood. That, for a hybrid map, is going to leave absolutely nothing, as both Eichenwald and Hollywood now have been banned. Wow, so then they are going to save D.Va. Now, that's an interesting pick. Um, I do think that's a safe pick, though, especially given that they've shown the uh, Team Safe Haven has shown the versatility of uh, a lot of heroes that get shut down by D.Va, like Farah, Reaper. Um, really good save in my opinion yep 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 i team safe haven is gonna 
Ban Lucio. Oh. Ooh, no speedy boot. Oh, Wait, never mind. Never mind. Aw, come on. Do it. <laughs> but yeah, so if they ban Lucio, that's going to be a really sick situation for Mean Greens. Meanwhile, though, again, a ban on Lucio, a ban on Reinhardt, that eliminates that 3 3 comp they Mean Greens has been showing some incredible proficiency with, especially coming back out on Dorado to do some amazing work. All right, guys, we are waiting for the ban here and the map pick. Uh, this is a really tense moment. We are uh, moving into the final rounds of this series with uh, Team, Safe and Team Safe Haven up two to one right now. Um, if we are going to see a comeback here for Mean Greens, turns out we're going to have to wait and see. But just wow, the fact that they were able to make that turnaround so effectively, uh, definitely making for an exciting match. Yeah, I love seeing Maxim Overwatch play come out, and the three O's are nice. You know, you like to see that dominant stance that some teams take, but seeing teams that are slightly more evenly matched coming out is much more fun, in my opinion. Again, more maps means more Overwatch, and that Team Safe Haven coming out banning the Zarya from Mean Greens. Oof. All right, so uh, save Diva ban Zarya, huh? So that's really going to strengthen that Diva pick as well. Oh yeah, and here we go on Horizon Lunar Colony. Mean Green's gonna have access to that D.Va, vital for that high ground switching. Mean Green's going to choose whether they attack or defend first. I wonder what they're gonna go with, given how Dorado just went for them. Definitely. Now, Team Safe Haven did choose to defend on the last couple rounds, and it looks like Mean Green's is choosing to defend this time. Can't fault them there. Yeah, I mean, it's like we were saying before, uh, they get to set the the pace they get to decide hey do we want to defend forward or do we want to defend on point uh ultimately the attackers have to come to the defenders in order to win the game mm -hmm. and as a reminder to our lovely watchers at home the mean greens have now switched over to the blue team and team safe haven will now show up in the red gonna start off this horizon lunar colony attack all right and guys don't forget to be keeping an eye on the mvp and vote for that in the twitch panel below love seeing what players come up with again let your voice be heard let us know is it you know which one of these amazing players going on tonight with you know there are a lot of them which one of them do you guys think deserves the glory of mvp but you know maybe wait and see horizon looter colony might have something for you all right so we will once again assemble the heroes um, Lunar Colony, right? We've got a lot of high ground here. Could see some strength coming out from Dive. Uh, we do see quite a bit of Sniper play on this map as well. Occasionally you see some Genji, Doomfist, or Sombra for the flank potential as well. Yeah, uh, Horizon Lunar Colony being one of those maps where the attack tend to be favored on the point A, defense tend to be favored a bit on point B. They, they made a little change to the map a while back where they altered some of the layout and especially changed how the defending spawn comes out and uh, hasn't really changed a super lot, but it is now a little easier for the offense to make a stand on point B. Definitely. They did add a little bit of a easier access to the high ground via a stairway as well as some walls up there as well so it's not just a steamroll when you walk through here uh, there are a couple more options available to each team it does balance out the map a bit uh, now it looks like our defenders are going to be rolling out here with three tank three support yet again we are running reinhardt diva and roadhog alongside a brigitte lucio and zenyatta and it looks like so far our attackers are going to be doing something a little more aggressive. We're seeing Cal on Reinhardt, Guppy on Brigitte, and we're going to see uh, three tank and three support coming out from red team as well. It's a solid pick. They have the advantage of being able to run the D.Va with the Zarya with the Reinhardt, and now they have their precious Zenyatta back, which means Discord's galore, and the proficiency of the team uh, Safe Haven to throw that Discord out was demonstrated clearly, and they're going to run straight to point. They're going to have to take Mean Greens down to task as they rotate down, swinging away. Cal once again has the Discord of himself there, and BAM! He gets wiped out thanks to a clever Discord, but that's both Reinhardt's down for both teams. No shields for anyone, and that's going to start to go a bit of a chaos fight. Yeah, despite the nice positioning coming out of Team Safe Haven, Mean Greens does manage to rotate effectively and defend the point here. Kraken absolutely beasting on Team Safe Haven right now. 
love seeing that Roadhog play, especially when you're running it at a slight disadvantage. It's not the comp you would normally be running, but this is Quacken's chance to shine. Absolutely. And we are going to see some high value hooks. Now, that's a nice, uh, nice thing about Roadhog on the high ground, right? Uh, he throws that hook and uh, the team is ready to just capitalize on it. If anybody uh, ends up out of position behind that shield and there it is, he was just fishing for it. Uh, not quite finding anything. Now we are going to see uh, Safe Haven rotating onto the point. We're going to start the engagement here. Uh, Brigida going in, trying to push them out. Uh, we're going to start trading some alts here. Rally for the Zenyatta alt. Uh, however, uh, we're just going to see the same here. Kyle going in with the signature shatter. We're going to end up blocking that diva bomb. However, uh, oh, we see a huge amount of value coming out of the return bomb from iMonkey. Uh, we're going to try to stall with the transcendence, but it won't be enough. And we are going to see a successful attack here from Team Safe Haven. It's so difficult to come back from an attack like that, and Mean Greens gets pushed so back into, far back into that spawn, which does not ever shift during this match, much like Volskaya. Hanamura being the one CP map that does, I wonder if the new Parish map will be any different, and the fight being taken directly to Mean Greens as Team Safe Haven, starting out on that offense, gonna try and go for some of that snowball potential with a fractal grab coming online very soon. All right, now we do have Gecko with the B on standby. Uh, however, an ultimate advantage is for Team Safe Haven. We are going to see that grab come out and get traded with the B. Uh, however, we are going to see three on Blue's time kill feed here. And it uh, looks like it's going to be a decisive fight for uh, Mean Greens here. We're going to push Team Safe Haven right back to the spawn. Yeah, Terminus is a uh, little hammer there. Rocket base, I believe, is what Brigitte calls it. Whew, that's some serious damage, and they've already built up to their next rally, and I am not surprised at all in the slightest. Definitely. Now we do have, uh, looks like four alts coming up for our blue team, almost five, uh, with another three or four alts coming out here for our red team as well. Um, now we are lacking in defensive alts for me and greens right now, so we could get a lot of value out of this shatter And there it is Cal brings it out uh, Sinister doesn't manage to defend the two teammates behind However, we are going to have the Freyer sound barrier here to provide sustenance for the red team uh, I monkey eating that entirely of jet shatter. However, we don't uh, lose the mech for it and blue team just start to light up the kill feed uh, with the melee damage and Kraken and Terminus going in cleaning everything up and we are once again pushing directly to the spawn now this map was the choice of Team Safe Haven, so I confess that I was expecting a bit more of a stronger showing. Uh, mean Greens, though, definitely up to the task. Ban Zarya, ban her some more. Why, you know, what they even were thinking. Uh, Roadhog should have been coming out way earlier for them if this is the kind of performance that they can put out. Absolutely, and here we are. Now the, the red team is a bit squishy. They are pretty vulnerable to the crowd control from the Kraken as well as Terminus. We've been seeing a lot of value out of that combo. Now we are going to see Cal leading the team in here. Uh, nice transcendence here from Flynn is going to just provide what we need. However, we are going to respond with one DK's trance of the zone. Uh, healing all around for everybody. Now Harley Quinn is going to drop that all and Cal is going to get that shatter there as well. Terminus going down from the D.Va alt. Guppy going in and trying to uh, just keep those tanks at bay and it is working out with Fractal backing up. Sinister wants to respond with the shatter that manages to put three teammates even behind the pillar. Uh, messy fight. Uh, Harley Quinn managed to get some picks and there is a spawn advantage coming in for blue so they do seem to be able to stabilize uh red team still trying to make their stand however it's not quite enough and blue team will be defending once again yeah harlequin those from the fight seem to be over it cost them their mech at the very end there but uh, unbelievable play they shatter coming out from sinister huge they managed to get there rather they are stopped by guppy's brigitte on the charge follow up though still there from the rest of the team and mean green's showing some great defense here on horizon all right and it looks like we're gonna go for a low ground approach here uh, Quack and not quite managing to get anything out of that hook and Sinister is going to come match the team here Coming in with a big Quack and all getting eaten by I Monkey and a huge Harlequin all is going to take that pick on Freyer who did have B available Interesting combo that I didn't really expect to be doing a lot of work there is the Hog plus the D.Va Whilst both everyone's trying to deal with the ha whole Hog ult D.Va gets to throw her bomb out there just to have a grand old time No one you have to pick which ultimate you're going to address Do you want slew of scrap heading at you or a giant mech? Uh, well neither of those really sound like great options if you ask me <laughs> 
Um, I mean, I suppose uh, the scrap is a little easier to diagnose and do surgery on rather than getting vaporized. Ugh, and in either case, that, uh, Mean Green's is timing of both of those ultimates means that Team Safehaven uh, just really doesn't have a lot to work with on their assault. They are, however, going to have quite the ultimate getting coming online. But so does the you know, Mean Green's, who have been staggering their ults brilliantly. All right, we are going to go in with Terminus's rally and Sinister backing up the position with the shield. Two Transcendence is trading again. Sinister does manage to get the pick on Guppy. A trans or a Graviton coming out, and we're going to follow up with Harlequin's bomb. Or not Harlequin, I'm sorry. Switch colors. I Monkey's bomb. Uh, blue team, however, <laughs> managing with another strong defense despite the alts coming out. We're pushing in, and it looks like the pure mechanical potential is just pushing out. We're getting those left clicks, boys. Also, holy crap, Gecko, what even the hell is going on? Love seeing that coming out from Malusio. Right clicks indeed, boosty, oh, oh, oh. And the other problem too, Safe Haven getting pushed away like that repeatedly after the ults come out from Mean Greens, they just generate some more. They're unable to get a clean death and it's actually doing a bad favor for them. They already have that deadly Diva Bomb whole hog combo up. Here comes and the Diva Bomb. Is. And they oh get my Malusio in the back. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Harlequin is getting a ton of value out of these bombs on this round. They didn't even and then they go, they just push oh, wow. right in. Yeah, uh, Cal gets a clap back on Terminus, but their spawn is a lot closer than theirs. And the whole hog is staying, the rally's still there, Trans and Sinister as well. But Team Safe Haven, on the other hand, not really a whole lot to show, and only 40 seconds left to show it. Now, it does look like we're going to be trading four ults for five here in just a moment uh, with Fractal very close to the Graviton Surge and Cal very close to the Earth Shatter as well. Now, our blue team is banking up alts. Uh, we're going to be seeing that Transcendence possibly trade with the 1DKs once again. Um, now, they're taking a different approach here. Team Safe Haven coming in from a different approach. I just hear Brigitte's shield bash go out like six times maybe. I don't even know what cooldowns those are. So many stuns, big shatters, Sinister grabbing that pole. Whole hog once again going in. It's gonna now get coupled up with a barrier and a grab. Big swings coming in. Ooh, ooh, this could be it though. Does it happen? No. Cal is going to pull Sinister into a bit of a charge, but Gecko claps back, making no more discords for the offense. Diva Bomb gets dropped right on the point. That's gonna eliminate anything. Boom! Fractal goes down. Kills for Mean Greens left and right. And with 47%, that's going to be the end of Horizon offense number one. Wow, what a great showing here for Mean Greens. Yeah, I, wow, love seeing this little resurgence from Mean Greens coming. Dorado apparently was just the start of their murders. Awesome. Well, we have 47.9% on the point. Um, so... Uh, Wow, a full hold here, just one and a half points that we have to get here on the attack in order to win this round. Yeah, uh, bam, that's uh, really solid play. And Mean Greens, uh, I don't know, the safe haven, well, they, you know, they set the pace. They do have their work cut out for them. If Mean Greens plays on offense on this map like they did on their defense, we're going to be looking at a game five. Definitely. I'm honestly excited for it. I want to see a game five. Uh, mean Greens, they're really showing that they deserve it. They want this win. Yeah, and who, again, loser's bracket. There is no, uh, there's no safe haven for them, any team, after this particular <laughs> map. It's win or be eliminated completely from this tournament. And looking at the defense coming out now from Team Safe Haven, they have definitely recognized that. They're going back to that standby Zenyatta 3-3 with you know, Cal on that vicious Reinhardt, I Monkey on that uh, D.Va. I just don't know, though. They got outplayed pretty solidly by the composition coming in from Mean Greens, and if it goes at all like it did last time, Mean Greens is going to make short work of it. Definitely. Now, we are seeing the classic positioning here on the high ground. I feel like they're going to be ready to drop. I mean, look at the melee damage. We are... Uh, Seeing a very close range comp again with Fractal on Zarya being the longest range hero on the team. I suppose we have Zenyatta orbs actually, so I stand corrected on that. But uh, <laughs> given that the the positioning of the team, you're not really going to get a whole lot done with a hammer and a shotgun being no. four six of your damage or two six of your damage. You know, both teams doing the exact same strategy. They take the low ground to keep from bringing out. Oh, there's going to be the drilly drop. The barrier, the hook comes out. It's going to bring it in. Cal dives into the back line. He gets nothing. He gets. Stunned, and now the swing is starting to come in. Boom! Look at these kills! Team Safe Haven, but also Quacken doing some incredible work on Hog. Dethroning a Diva from her mech, eliminating the Zenyatta. Uh oh. 
and that's going to be a bit of a chaotic fight coming in for both teams. Wow, and so it ended up looking really good for uh, Mean Greens for just a moment there, but we did see just a really strong hold there from Team Safe Haven. Uh, extremely aggressive play from both sides, ultimately funneling into that choke point behind the point turned out not to be the best move. Um, and we were able to clean up that fight. Now we are seeing ultimates already for Team Safe Haven. However, Mean Greens is not far behind with almost four of their ults out. Yeah. Uh, mean Greens, though, they don't have anything showing right now, but boy, are they ever about to. And this engagement could be the make or break it for this point, with Fractal getting shoved away. Big Shatter goes in, though. That's the cow we all knew and loved, and wham, in he comes, a swinging. Fortunately, though, for Mean Greens, before they can really get any ults out. That was a very oh, no. efficient fight. Just one Earth Shatter in order to wipe the team and buy about another 45 seconds here while the our blue team regroups. Now, the ultimate economy is in favor of blue team at this point. However, we do have two support alts available for Team Safe Haven uh, that can definitely provide the extra sustain and counter needed in order to survive this next push. Yeah, and again, it actually, I misspoke. Sinister did get their ult out. I think it was shut down by Cal. Throwing out again a shatter a little ahead of time. He jumps the big grab. Diva Bomb gonna come into the back line. Bad positioning. Boom! But both Diva Bombs each get the <laughs> Lucios. That kind of symmetry is something you don't always see. Yeah, both of these Divas is trading effectively, getting a lot of values out of these levels. Eye Monkey and Harley Quinn both with a really good showing here. We're gonna see more work come out of this tank line. Kraken going in with the whole hog and, and the team able to clean up. It looks like Green Greens is going to take this point. Not a lot of time left on the clock though. Quacken coming out with the whole hog at the last minute there. Massive for that push. Absolutely. Getting everybody off that point and doing a crazy amount of damage. Now we are seeing five minutes, 20 seconds on the clock here for Mean Greens. Not a whole lot of alts coming out. Now we are going to be trading two for two. It's a beat for a beat and a shatter for a shatter. Oh, and Cal drops out the shatter again, catching all the back line. That's gonna leave. Whoa, what that is even is this? Mean Green's clapping back. What even are you doing? That was supposed to be a shatter. You were supposed to lose that fight. Instead, you completely turned it around. They're gonna take 47% at this point in no time. There's no way that the safe haven can get back on the point. We're looking at game five. Holy crap. What a shatter. Absolutely massive. That had to have been play of the game right there from Sinister. Yeah, I... Uh, here it comes, here it comes. I, we have to. It has to be this one. Oh, man. It's going to be on the nice flank. Look at that. The shield just out of position, getting almost everybody on the team in that shatter and just going in on it. They did not stand a chance. I guess that's the trick. As When you're getting your defensive shatter online, you got to make sure you catch the right members of the enemy team. If you leave that critical individual, the one with the ultimate, you're going to have it turned around on you. Absolutely. Wonderful. Wow. Game five here. Um, wow. After watching game one, I didn't expect this. I'm not going to lie. Mean Greens absolutely just turned on the juice on Dorado there. And they, they said, no, we are not going down without a fight. It's anybody's game here. Yeah, I <laughs> again. These teams came into it uh, from on paper being pretty evenly matched. Mean Greens, uh, they're coming out swinging. They had said they had the lessons learned. Team Safe Haven such showing an incredible demonstration of textbook good high level Overwatch. And then Mean Greens just completely turns it around. On a map that they get to choose, Dorado, they take it all the way to the end. And then on Horizon, technically uh, Safe Haven's Safe Haven, they just completely dominate. Absolutely. All right. So we are going to be waiting here for the next set of hero and map bands, or I guess hero and map picks. It should be more precise there. Yeah. And it's going to be a Ryan save from Mean Greens, and they're going to ban Hollywood, which was already banned. As we mentioned, there are no more hybrid maps available to play. We've played the Dorado. We've also grabbed Bichon Tower and Ilios has also been banned. Harina Colony, Loser Colony, Hanamore. The only maps available left are actually Busan and Route 66. So one of those is going to get banned. And then by default, we are going to the end. There it is. Route 66 gets banned from Mean Greens. Didn't see that coming. Honestly, I, I was just thinking it. I was like, I want to see a match on Busan. <laughs> I, I actually don't really know how I feel about Busan yet. The, the maps are so different. 
And the dy what I, I think I do like, I think I've decided that I do really enjoy it, is the way the map changes. The, especially the mech bay. Uh, just that kind of dynamic cover going up and down. Master it or die by it. Yeah, at least it's on a timer. So that's good. I always get screwed up by like moving platforms and stuff like that. So it's just like, oh man, those platforms went down. You've got a big diva nuke in the middle of the point and the diva timed it out perfectly so that the mech blows up right when the walls go down. It's, oh, it's yeah. just, oh no. <laughs> like you, think, you think you're safe, you think you're safe. Wait, no, 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 boom. And, and there, there it is. Go. Yeah, I can't do anything. Team Safe Haven bans Brig. Oh no. For me and Greens. That's interesting. Again, yeah, I think they're trying to... Oh, I'm sorry? I think they're trying to figure out which element of that composition is the one that they need to remove for them to not be able to run 3-3. But I think Mean Greens has found their stride. I don't think it matters anymore what Team Safe Haven bans. They're just kind of, Team Safe Haven has to find a way to counter Mean Greens' favorite comp a different way. Now, do you think we're going to uh, see some counterplay against Quacken's Roadhog? Do you even think we're going to see more Quacken Hog going on here? Uh... Difficult to say. Was it the shock and awe, or was it the and they're gonna switch sides on us? You sons of guns. Team Safe Haven, ladies and gentlemen, back on the left in the blue, with Mean Greens back on the right in the red. As for a counterplay, boy, would I love to see it. Honestly, if the hog comes out again, uh, Busan has pretty good fire play. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we did see some great Pharah earlier, and actually, on um, the last matches that I was commentating last weekend, um, we saw some really interesting. Uh, Pharaoh Mercy with Ash uh, come out on the second level of this point with the drums. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, this map is too new. I don't know the names of all the of all the levels individually. So drums, drums is good. I like drum. <laughs> um, I like the drums. You can shoot them. You can make beats. It's fun. Yes. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, also, don't forget the DDR pad, and then naturally the karaoke uh, room for the other spawn on this particular map, the city center. The match on this particular individual. This is where you get the instance of uh, some of that Fara play, which and also maybe some Widowmaker. Uh, both teams, uh, Widowmaker we saw was really nice pick for either team. We're going to get some technical difficulties here by the way, because due to the team switch swap I believe we have some banning problems. Alright, so we will be taking just a quick break to fix that problem. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and reset the map here. Luckily, we caught it early, uh, so it didn't cause any problems. Uh, so at least this time, yeah, we're just going to be able to reset. It's going to be all good. Now, guys, uh, as you're watching out there, just make sure that you are keeping an eye on that MVP and cast your vote down below on the Twitch panel. Uh, who do you think is doing best or who do you think is just uh, the most lovable on that team? Vote for MVP and we want to hear your voice. Yep. Uh, make sure you grab that panel down there, click your fave, and we'll be sure to report it, report it afterwards. Now, we are actually going to be switching over to Drum! Or I, I think it's Shrine, I'm not sure. Either way, it's the Tai Gook gem world. from, uh, <laughs> yeah, Drum World. It's the Tai Gook gem from Diablo 3, that's the one I remember the most, uh, that channel and bonus. But anyways, the point here, I also want to call out, this is probably the map, I think, with the least amount of control point square footage. Yeah, Either definitely. No. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's there's just so much real estate on the outside of that point there. And I mean, there, you have these walls for cover, sure. But it's just like you were saying earlier, hey, you might see some really strong fair up play here. Um, now, I believe you mentioned earlier today uh, the left and right side drums are and a lot of teams making a lot of good use out of those areas, especially with the point being so open. Um, it almost serves as kind of a high ground that looks down onto the point. Yeah, you see some very interesting play, especially in the Big Pagoda, the highest ground, so to speak, and it can pay attention. The interesting here is, of course, where you get the situation of who takes it first. Do you actually use the drum in the center of the point to grab some cover, maybe take advantage of it? And I think that's going to be exactly what Team C both teams rather are doing exactly that. They're going straight for the middle. They're not even going to bother with that alternating ground. Both teams running that 3-3. So that's going to be the situation where, again, who's going to get the picks first? Big anti-nade comes out. 
All right, so we are going to see Cal and Sinister going at it here. Uh, we're looking for that opening pick, and there it is. I Monkey manages to bring down Sinister, and that is going to be the opening we need. There is a big anti need going in on the blue team, but they managed to push through and survive. We are going to see the kill feed light up blue, and our uh, team Safe Haven is going to take the point first. So I think this is possibly the situation that maybe Moonbeams wanted to avoid, and they absolutely could have. We could be playing on a escort map at this moment right now as we speak but mean greens chose to ban it and now they're playing on busan and the lijiang tower control point uh king of the hill map didn't necessarily uh develop in their favor that is true however we are going to be seeing a nano boost coming out here we don't quite have a cow all and that's going to be the main thing that's going to be holding this pushback with the speed uh, we don't have a oh there is going to be a fractal all coming out as well soon there is the nano boost on sinister and that's going to be a huge purple is going to <laughs> the transcendence. however cal gets the massive shatter there uh, we're not going to get any casualties out of it we're going to see a really great transcendence there from flams as well first pick goes to frayer there with massive team support onto sinister and blue team ultimately ends up going through and completely tearing this push apart Cal gets a fat slam, as usual, uh, or rather not as usual, but the back to their form we saw earlier in the match. And here comes Sinister, though. We're in, we know the how, how good they are on Reinhardt. They're going to have that shatter. And Terminus, though, Terminus abandons whatever charge they had. They're going to jump over to a McCree. This is going to be a bit of a curveball. Definitely. Now, maybe they're looking for uh, the McCree flashbang over the shield combo to set up those shatters. Uh, anything to kind of contain Cal so that we can guarantee these pushes because they know that everything is contingent on that opening position and that opening pick. Brigitte's sustain and shield bash doing that job for them previously, but yeah, that's been banned from them. They have to go, but that Terminus sends the shatter right into the shield. No bueno situation, though, and that's going to be a covering grab from Quacken, but Sinister goes down before anything can happen thanks to the damage of all three supports and team ck is going to keep the point they've got 90 percent the shatter goes in the grab it's just an old fiesta for team safe haven who pushes mean greens away i don't think they're going to be able to get back in time to change this point away yeah wow what a great beat there from freer uh completely absorbing that diva bomb from harlequin uh excellent play there saving everyone's life in that graviton yeah i uh, again i i, I question going back to a two cp uh, or rather a king of the hill map when you're mean greens this uh, as far as a comeback story goes this is probably going to be the one that they look back on and say we maybe again this being a tournament where we can take away and learn a few things i think they may need to be brushing up their king of the hill game this is match point now for team safe haven who without the brigitte in the on the uh mean green side they're gonna have to shake up the strategy quite a bit now it looks like we're gonna be running winston widow and genji with Lucio and Anna as support and Harley Quinn on her signature diva. I like this coming out. Terminus was excellent on that uh, uh, Widowmaker. Gecko, of course, on the Genji. Huge force to be reckoned with. And there it is. Team Safe Haven rotating so quickly to that point. Despite both teams having the Lucio. Getting set up there means they get to generate percentage while they fight. All right, and now we do have blue team with point control initially. However, we have a high ground approach with the dive composition. We do see some big Lucio boop come out from Freyer, and Cal managing to push in with the hammer is going to clean up this fight. Uh, the initial positioning that they had did prove strong, and the dive didn't quite go as expected for our red team. It uh, looks like we're going to try to see some stall come out here from Quack, and just to buy some time, um, it is valuable time to have, given that the point was not captured yet. going to give us a little more just to respawn with. Uh, stronger position to regroup so that we just don't get rolled up into the spawn as can happen on a King of the Hill map and as we saw in Li Zhang earlier. Gecko had just gotten annihilated before they even got into the fight there. They barely generated any ult charge. Meanwhile, again, Cal just about has a shatter and Fractal half the way there. Guppy is probably going to be pulling on Rally in the middle of the fight. Meanwhile, Mean Green's only going to have the nano boost, and again, their work is cut out for them on this situation. Winston dives in almost alone. Gecko follows up, but there's... And they are! They're going to get 1dk, and now it's a fight! All right, and we have Sinister going in with Nano Monkey. However, does get countered by Cal Shatter. Uh, we're going to go in with the, uh, the Brigitte's Rally here in a fat purple. Looks like Blue Team is going to continue to hold the fight uh, over almost as soon as that initial pick happened. Cal's, Cal's Shatters. I, I think the last two games were a bit of a wake-up call. He has now decided that not a single Shatter will go to waste. I, you know, maybe they learned, yeah, more Shatters doesn't necessarily mean better, but what if I had more Shatters and they were better? 
Yeah, you know, it's the double whammy combo here. And without the Reinhardt on our red team to block, we are reliant only on a Winston shield and support alts to block any potential shatter. That was a really interesting block there from Cal manages to actually hold that diva bomb. And then it uh, looks like we're just gonna like push right in once again with the speed boost <laughs> and uh, clean up that point. I wish Not I was so I wish I was so good at generating shatters that I could use them on a single uh, tracer on the point. Um, yeah. See, I don't even think it's a bad move. I know Cal's gonna have another shatter move if it's fighting this uh, point. It's... Definitely, for the 99% push, and even so, because Tracer is such a pesky, hard to pin down target, um, I mean, it's it's still gonna be a 5v6 with a major <gasps> DPS down. Terminus, though, they throw their Tracer Bomb and it gets eaten by Our Monkey, who had their defense matrix up at exactly the right moment. Barriers come in for the remainder of Team Safe Haven, and Gecko bringing out the Reaper may not be enough to take this fight in the right direction, as Team Safe Haven manages to clear them out. And then say, I told you! Cal has the Shatter once again! He grabs Terminus on the Tracer, and it's just an Ana and a Diva left, and they do pick up the Ana. That's the only one remaining Harlequin. They're gonna get DMEC. The rest of Mean Green's gonna be coming now onto the point, but the stagger is real. The stall is coming out. Trans on the field means Team Safe Haven is gonna be wrapping this fight up and taking the victory. A long, hard fought one over Mean Green's. Wow, what a game. A huge comeback, but ultimately, Team Safe Haven just proving the dominance on the King of the Hill maps. Uh, all of those fights were really decisive for Team uh, Safe Haven, so. Uh, not sure King of the Hill was really the move. I think uh, given the performance on Dorado, Mean Greens might have had a stronger contention there on Route 66. Yeah, that was just absolutely filthy. I, uh, but I, I didn't expect anything else. Uh, I know Mean Greens had a really solid showing on the two maps there that they won, but Team Safe Haven had a really strong showing on a King of the Hill format, and they came out and they had another really strong showing on a King of the Hill format. 100%. Absolutely. Guys, that went out to game five. That was a whole crazy ton of action. Make sure you vote for that MVP. We want to know who is that MVP. Cast your votes below on the Twitch panel. Absolutely. Scroll it right on down there. See what's going in. And I think we're going to have someone from Team Safe Haven for Callisti to interview post the match. Awesome. Looks like we're going to be having 1DK here in just a moment. Uh, just preparing to get connected to him now as he uh, follows up with his team as well. All right, we have 1DK here with us from the winning team, Team Safe Haven. 1DK, how are you doing? Oh, uh, we're doing good after that. That was a good round. Good fought from the other, from Mean Greens. I think really good match, really close match. Yeah, absolutely. That was a nail biter. Uh, you guys really had a dominant showing for the first two maps, and then Mean Green really turned it around. Uh, when they really came at you guys aggressively on Dorado, how, what were you guys feeling at that moment? Like, how how did you guys handle that? Uh, we we tried to stay calm, but we had a lot of uh, miscommunicate. We had a lot of communication errors. Um, and then we sort of, once we got that figured out, we were able to come back. And I think that's what helped us win the series. Yeah, definitely. Because we saw that classic stability on game five here. Now, do you feel that you guys are particularly strong on King of the Hill maps in comparison to other maps? Um, normally when we play King of the Hill maps, like in our earlier series, uh, we're only strong because of our DPS play, because normally I'm a Farah player. Um, but I think our... Our scrims and our practice really on King on control maps really allowed our communication to shine through there because I think it's a I think it's a confidence thing where we go into a, into a control map and we're able to really think okay just focus the Reinhardt and we're able to just hard commit on the Reinhardt and without being worried because we we had a lot of issues uh, miss calling and calling and thinking okay we can't kill the Reinhardt what are we gonna do uh, kill the Brewing and then we just lost it but I think going into that map with the confidence of our usual control play, we were able to succeed. That's good, that's good. That you had that backup plan just in case and that you were able to uh, sort out those communication errors and ultimately bring it through in the end. Uh, that was frankly a really exciting match and just to see the teams going back and forth like that was just crazy to see. Um, now you personally popped off pretty hard on both support and on DPS. That was great to see as well. Um, 
do you guys ultimately end up like do you, like do you practice most of the time or like are you a relatively new team how long have you been together well we're a very new team i think we've had three scrims together as a team um wow. so it's definitely uh hopefully a very steep performance curve we're going up now where our performance hopefully will get exponentially better over time i think um just as we practice and as we move out some of our issues especially regarding like uh confidence and self and trusting uh, other members of our team i think definitely and it really does show in your play i mean you guys have a really high amount of coordination and it seems like you were able to come through uh with the communication breakdown really effectively and it, and it won you in the end so hopefully you're able to see continued success yeah thank you uh, well congratulations uh was there anything else that uh you wanted to say to the stream uh i hope next time i don't have to play zenyatta and good <laughs> good good matches all around though Awesome, and we are going to tabulate the votes here for MVP, and I should be getting word on that in just a moment. Uh, 1DK, congratulations on your win. It was great to have you here. Thanks for the interview. Yeah, thank uh, you. And yeah, I hope the rest of your night goes awesome. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, drum roll. The MVP is Flams. Like seeing that. So they had come out they were doing you know some solid work uh i think that's probably gonna have to do with some of the support play we were seeing yeah definitely we saw some huge transcendences and for as much as we were hyping up the reinhardt play it would be nothing without really great support play backing it up so congratulations flames you definitely deserve that oh yeah so ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us tonight this has been threepwood 007 you can find me on twitter and twitch at threepwood 007 and I'm Khaleesi. I'll be here again at 10 o'clock Eastern Time for your next match. Uh, tune on in and we'll see you later. Have a good night, everyone.